In today's video, we're taking a look at how to make your own HD indoor or outdoor TV antenna easy and simple. This is so easy, anyone could do it. Everything that we use on the video, we're gonna leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That does help us out a lot, thank you. So you woke up today and turned on the TV. You saw it's acting funny and the channels are not coming through. You look outside and there's no storm. Or you're just trying to save some money and cut the wire. Don't worry, here at the Static Box team, we've got your back. The first thing that we're gonna need is some copper wire and preferably minimum 12 gauge thickness. You can also strip down some electrical wire and it would get the job done. We're going to show later on the video on how we strip the wires. If you're using electrical wires or you can even use copper tubing, whatever you have in hand. And we're going to need either a maximum of 204 inches, which is about 17 feet or a minimum of 170 inches, which is equivalent to 14.2 feet. Next, you're going to need a coaxial cable and that's going to depend on how far from the antenna you're gonna have your TV. We're gonna need a minimum of 10 screws and depending on the head size of your screws, you might need some washers. Next, we're gonna need a piece of wood. In this case, we're using a two by four we found laying around and this one is about 20 inches. The longer, the better. Next, we're gonna need a matching transformer. You can get this for around $3. We'll leave a link on the description of the video. And now that we filled your brain with data and information, information, we're ready to get our hands dirty. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to verify that we do have a TV. And once we get that information down pack, we're ready to start. So the first thing that we're going to do in our installation process is measure our wood. In this case, this one, it's a little bit over 20 inches. Now we're going to pick a number where we can make four lines on the wood and still have space at the bottom to hang our antenna. In our case, we're gonna choose three inches. So that means we're gonna make a line at the three inch mark, at the six inch mark, at the nine inch mark, and at the 12 inch mark. And we're gonna start from the top down. If you have a bigger piece of wood, you can use four inches, five inches, all the way up to eight inches as a marking reference. And to keep the symmetry, we're gonna use this square to make sure that we get the line from side to side. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. At the end of the day, this is a general guideline. Now we're going to pick the spot where we're going to put our screws. And being this a two by four, we're going to choose one inch off the corner on each line that we drew before. Now you should have eight markings for your screws. And because the last thing you want after you use all that math and data is for your wood to crack, we're going to pre-drill the holes for our screws. Because after looking smart, throwing out numbers, measurements, and calculations in front of your partner, loved one, family member, or friend, then your wood cracks. So we wanna avoid that. We're ready to insert the screws in place. You can use the drill for this, or you can use your beautiful, strong Hulk arms to screw this in the old fashioned way using a screwdriver. But if you can push them in with your fingers, we salute you. You are a level above of the rest of us. We wanna make sure that we don't screw the screws all the way in leaving space for the wire later on. Now we're ready for the second step. We're gonna go to our copper wire and cut out eight pieces of 17 inches. And for this, we're gonna use some needle nose pliers using the flat side or the cutting part of it. And remember, you can always use some gloves, some safety glasses, because the last thing you want on a clear sunny day is to die. Now that we show that copper wire who's the boss, what we wanna do is convert their straightness to a V shape. And we do that by first finding the middle, then bending it and leaving an opening of three to four inches on the other side. And don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. With time, you may have to wiggle one a little bit to the left, to the right, shake your body and get them in there. Now we're ready to place each copper wire V looking sculpture on each screw. So holding it down with one hand and the other, we screw down the screw, bending the wire under the screw and tightening. Having a Watson for this part of the video goes a long way. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. With each one that you put, you might have to adjust the other one to have enough spacing. 
the rule of thumb is that the first one and the last one, we want them to point more down than to the sides or the top one more up than to the sides. This would give you more space for the other ones, but at the same time, get you more signal all around. We wanna make sure that we tighten well so they won't go anywhere because the last thing you want after you finish the whole project is for it to fall apart. And now we're gonna cut two pieces of a minimum of 17 inches. If it's a little bit longer, we can always cut it later on. And we're gonna use this electrical wire to show you how you can use the electrical wire instead of the copper wire that we used before. So if you have any laying around, you can use that as well and save a few more dollars or even free. We like to strip the ends and then by sections, cut it and then pull it out. It makes it easier than trying to pull the whole casing in one shot. Remember to use both arms for even pump. And what we're basically going to do is make a connection from one side to the other. Basically in regular words, it's an in interconnecting zigzag side to side motion connection masterpiece. So we're basically going to loosen the screw, pick up our V shape, place the wire under, and you can start from any side. Then our second connection, we're gonna go to the other opposite side, repeat, loosening the screw, picking up the V, placing it under. We go down and repeat for the next one as well, going straight down. Then for the last one, we go ahead and cross back to the other side. Now you become a zigzag champion. We're ready to do the other side. We're basically going to start on the empty first one on the other side, loosen screw, pick up V, place wire under, then cross over to the other side, repeat again on the next one under, and then cross over to the other side and finish. You're becoming a master just by looking at this. And if you want, you don't have to limit yourself to eight screws. You can always add even more if you notice in your location, you need more signal. Just like a fly trap, you're trying to catch as much signal as you can. So bigger, badder the wolf, the easier that brick wall is coming down. Now, what we wanna make sure is that we do that everywhere it intersects, we wanna separate them using a separation barrier or how we like to call it black electrical tape. You can even use the leftover wire casing that we cut previously. So we're basically going to repeat this for the top X and for the bottom X. If you need to loosen any screws to be able to do this, to have space where the wire connects, you can do that. Remember, this is your DIY project and you are the king, queen, both or none of your castle. Just remember the ancient rule passed down generation to generation. Don't let your spouse know, your partner know, family member, friend, neighbor, rule quietly. That would obtain a long reign. Now we're ready to install our matching transformer. But before we do that, we wanna find the best location to do that. So what we wanna do is take each side connector and connect it to each wire on each side. We wanna mark with a pencil the best location where we want to install it. We believe that right in the middle is the best place. We're gonna take our drill and pre-drill for the holes because the last thing you want is for that wood to crack after all that work. But if you don't have a drill or you're using self-tapping screws, we salute you. Now we're gonna take our screws and make sure that our transformer and screws touch the wire. We're gonna tighten them both down until it feels tight and you've done it. You have phase one done. If you have any excess wire at the bottom, you can cut that off if you'd like to do that. But remember, the thing about DIY is supposed to look DIY because if it looks too perfect and it doesn't work, they're going to tell you, go return it to the store. But you know, in this case, you can't return it to yourself. You actually can, but we don't want to. But don't worry, it is going to work. We're going to take our coaxial cable and connect it to the end. We like placing cable holders to prevent the transformer from spinning or the coaxial cable from disconnecting or creating any unnecessary pressure and ruining the project, you can also use zip ties to prevent this. And now you've done it, Grasshopper. You finally can hang that antenna wherever it becomes a sore eye to your neighbors or to your spouse, family member, or friend in the household. It's always preferably the higher and less obstructed place you can place it, the better chances of signal you would have. Now take that remote control, scan the airwaves for some channel. You can pad yourself 
yourself on the back for a job well done. Don't forget, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone on the Slatterbox team or someone on the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching and here's a link to our latest video.